Okay, so welcome to this video. In this video, what we're going to discuss is the PI3 kinase AKT mTOR pathway. Okay, and we're specifically going to discuss this pathway downstream of the activation of receptor tyrosine kinases. Now, it's true that it can actually be activated by other types of receptors other than receptor tyrosine kinases. It can actually be activated by G-protein coupled receptors, uh, but we're going to look at it being activated by receptor tyrosine kinases. Okay, right then. The structure for this video then. Firstly, I'm going to give an overview of what the point of the PI3 kinase AKT mTOR pathway is. Then what we'll do is um, we'll discuss receptor tyrosine kinases using a specific example, which will be the uh, epidermal growth factor receptor. Uh, we'll discuss activation of receptor tyrosine kinases and then how those are going to activate uh, phosphoinositide free kinase and Enzymes. We'll spend quite a lot of time discussing the reaction that phosphoinositide free kinase enzymes are going to catalyze, um, and then we'll discuss the specific types of phosphoinositide free kinase enzymes that are going to be activated by uh, receptor tyrosine kinases. Then what we'll discuss is the generation of PIP3 and how it will then activate the enzyme AKT. Okay, uh, all of them because there are multiple AKT enzymes. And uh, then what we'll discuss is how this is then going to go on to interact with the mammalian target of rapamycin complex 1. Okay, and then what the effect of the mammalian target of rapamycin complex 1 activation is going to be. Okay, so the starting point then is to discuss what the purpose of this AK, sorry, this PI3 kinase AKT mTOR pathway is going to be. Well, basically, we're going to look at it uh, downstream of a receptor tyrosine kinase. Now, the other huge pathway that receptor tyrosine kinase is activate is the ras raf mec erk pathway. Okay, now, most receptor tyrosine kinases are growth factor receptors of some form. Okay, so for instance, our archetypal example is going to be the epidermal growth factor receptor, which is a receptor for epidermal growth factor. Okay, now growth factors induce growth within cells, okay, they make cells get bigger. And the reason for this is because uh, what we're going to do is we're hopefully going to proliferate, so we're going to make the cell divide. Now, in order for the cell to divide in two, the cell firstly has to actually grow in size itself because it needs to uh, have enough uh, proteins and enough intracellular organelles for two cells now rather than just one. So firstly, before a cell actually divides into two, it has to grow in size basically so that it's big enough to actually split in two. Otherwise, when you split it in two, you get two cells that were half the size basically and you don't want that. Okay, right. Uh, so the ras raf mec erk pathway is going to be activated uh, by receptor tyrosine kinases and overall what it's going to result in is changes uh, on the level of the genes, okay? Uh, well, epigenetics rather than genetic changes. But it's going to change the expression of genes so that we can start producing more proteins, okay? So if you want to produce more proteins, you need to firstly transcribe the genes into mRNA, okay? The ras raf mec erk pathway is going to produce that change in the expression of genes so that we can uh, produce more mRNA. Now, the problem with just producing more mRNA is that at the moment the cell does not have the translational machinery to actually turn that mRNA into protein, okay? So this other pathway that's also going to be activated by receptor tyrosine kinases, the PI3 kinase AKT mTOR pathway, this is going to do the next bit, okay? This is going to activate the translational machinery, okay? Because the ras raf mec erk pathway has increased our production of mRNA, but there's no point increasing our production of mRNA if we don't 
increase our translational machinery's activity uh, so that it can actually translate this mRNA into protein, which is obviously what we overall want. Okay, so the two pathways which are, well, the two main pathways which are activated by receptor tyrosine kinases to produce the growth of this cell and then the division of the cell, uh, they kind of go hand in hand. One produces the epigenetic changes that cause change in transcription of the genes. Okay, the other is going to produce the translational changes that then allow us to actually translate this increased amount of mRNA that we've produced and then turn it into an increase in the amount of protein we've got. Okay, so that's the big picture of what the PI3 kinase AKT mTOR pathway is going to do. It's going to activate translation of mRNA into proteins, and it's going to do this in two ways. Firstly, it's going to increase the number of ribosomes you have. It's going to activate the cell to produce more ribosomes. Okay, and remember, ribosomes are the functional uh, units which convert mRNA into protein. And in addition to that, it's also going to actually activate the translational machinery that you already have. So it's going to make uh, the ability of each ribosome to translate uh, mRNA into protein greater, basically. It's going to speed up the rate at which an individual ribosome translates, basically. Okay, so... Um, we're now going to start the pathway then. We're going to start with receptor tyrosine kinases and work our way down. Okay, right. So let's begin with receptor tyrosine kinases then. Now, receptor tyrosine kinases are a large uh, family of receptors. Okay, they are in the larger family of receptors known as enzyme coupled receptors. Okay, so uh, overall there are um, four main types of receptor. There are ligand gated ion channels. Okay, which are ion channels which open when the ligand binds to them. There are G-protein coupled receptors, number two. There are enzyme coupled receptors, which basically have, uh, an, well, when the ligand binds to the receptor, that will cause the activation of some sort of enzymic activity on the intracellular side. Okay, and then finally there's also the nuclear receptors, okay, which are generally receptors for steroids. Now, uh, receptor tyrosine kinases are a subset of the enzyme coupled receptors. So there are other enzyme coupled receptors. So uh, these receptor tyrosine kinases are going to be receptors which specifically have a tyrosine kinase enzyme on their cytoplasmic side. Uh, and this, the function of this tyrosine kinase enzyme is going to be activated by the ligand binding, basically. Okay, right, but there are other enzyme-coupled receptors, such as receptor serine threonine kinases. Okay, right, so overall in the human there are 58 different receptor tyrosine kinases, okay? And these are grouped into 20 families. Now, uh, for our purposes, we do not need to go through the 20 different families of receptor tyrosine kinases. We're just going to pick one specific family of receptor tyrosine kinases, okay? We are going to pick a family of receptor tyrosine kinases known as the HERB-B family, okay? And this is what we're going to demonstrate the whole principle with, okay? So one of these 20 families of receptor tyrosine kinases is this HERB-B family of receptor tyrosine kinases. Okay, right. So, uh, there are four members of this HERB-B family. There is the HERB-B1, the HERB-B2, the HERB-B3, and the HERB-B4. Okay, so there's HERB-B1 all the way through to HERB-B2. Uh, sorry, uh, before. Okay, and I'm sorry about this, but we'll have to continue this video and this discussion in the next video.